Quite many people of you have uh, kind of been coming and saying, oh, how interesting, we have never before heard lecture about film music here in, the, in documentary circles, so I'm really happy to be here. But I will start with a song. Oi ma me suomi synnyin maa, soi sana kultainen. Ei laksoa, ei kukkula, ei vettä rantaa rakkaampaa kuin kotimaata pohjoinen. Maa kallis isi. Thank you. Um, I heard that here is one uh, day, uh, special day, but we have very special day in Finland as well. We have our Independence Day today. But what I wanted to tell with this one, uh, that I could see your faces, that what is this woman doing? <laughs> really embarrassing. I don't know if it was more embarrassing for me or you that I so song, sang that song. And um, because I think that it's obvious also in film music that um, we have to have emotional <coughs> contact to the music, otherwise it definitely doesn't work. When I'm singing that song, it's our national hymn, I see snow, I see candles, it was my grandmother's birthday and we always went, I got candies, how nice. But who cares? In film music, I think that the biggest mistake is that people think that it's interesting what composer feels. It has nothing to do with film music, absolutely. It's the first mistake, because we, we, if it's only how I feel, you feel left out like you felt left out when I'm singing Finnish national hymn. It means total different things for me than for you. So, in film music we have to go to memories and our experiences. Our auditive, auditive memory, it starts from the time before we were even born. When we were in, uh, s still non-born babies, we started to hear noises and different sounds. My father has been an opera singer, what you can't hear from my singing. So uh, when I came home as a baby, I was sleeping while my father was singing great opera arias. I didn't react them, they were just natural to me. Um, and then babies are communicating very much before they speak. They are able to communicate with sound. And it's quite funny the time when babies, they don't know what is kind of human communication and what is in generally the sounds. My older son, um, for example, started very, very early step before, somewhere he was half a year old. Always when I took him to kitchen, he said, because he had learned that my cappuccino machine was, was, was the, the sound of kitchen. And he was looking at me and we had that. So that, that has very much to with, do with film music. It's not about how the composer feels. It's not about how the director feels. It's not even about how the main character feels. We really have to turn it upside down. We have to work on how the audience feels. Yes, and of, of course, we everybody have very, very different history of sound, and very different sounds means something for you. I was uh, studying also uh, music therapy, what is a very interesting subject, because there you, um, you are concentrating how sound affects to your body and to your mind. 
that it leads, music leads because it starts our memory with sounds and music. It starts so early that music works in really, really subconscious areas. It's like smell. When you smell something, what you don't, it, it can really open up big, big memories, and sound has the same effect. My um, music therapy teacher was working in in hospital, where was um, one woman, and she was in coma, and nobody could contact her. And um, he tried. He made a CD, where was all. No, not good music, but important music for that lady. He was working with the husband of that woman uh, who was in coma. And they took maybe their wedding music, maybe a stupid pop song from the time when you were deeply in love, all that kind of things. And they were playing that over and over again. Because hearing, it can be the last bridge to your consciousness. And that woman woke up from coma, and, and she could remember. And, and that music had activated all those memories. It's quite an amazing story. So I really recommend all of you to start to make yourself a coma testament. <laughs> so in case you accidentally go to coma, so children's songs, Christmas songs, and maybe if you have been in, in a car accident or something, some very heavy crashes among it. So this way, I think that um, uh, if we go to concert and, uh, and listen to the music, um, it has its position. It's composed and we are sitting and we are clapping hands and we get feelings, but we also kind of adore how, how beautiful it was composed and how, how could this violinist play so quickly. But how I see, I see that film music is in, in position of ritual music. Which means that it's not very important uh, um, what the music is, as long as it works. It shouldn't, if we go to funerals, it's very, it's very bad thing if we are thinking, oh how interesting, they have C major chord here. And then they have a quite interesting rhythm in that song. No, we should kind of go through that music, that ritualistic music. We should go and see something else, what was maybe somebody's life, our memories. So I call film music that, that ritualistic position, I call it, and it's used very well here in Greece, Greek Catholic country, I call film, film music as icon. So we are seeing through that film music. We are not stuck in the music. We are not listening. Oh, how, how good guitar solo. Or maybe it can also be true. But mostly it's in a position of icon. We see through that music to the screen. We see better things. That's how I work. It's very important to me. And that's so what we want to see. And that's the cooperation of composer and the director. I think. So I'm, I'm speaking about music for documentaries, but I a little bit have to disappoint you this way, that I, I don't see very, very big difference in composing music for fiction or documentaries. The, the way we are, like Niels was speaking yesterday, that we are cleansing material and putting it to a certain order and kind of clarifying and, and making better the story and, or, or the message what we want to tell. The project is very much the same in fiction and in uh, documentary. But what I see, and I'm not joking, but the conditions of, of to co compose for documentary, there's one very big condition, and it's budget. Because in fictions, there's much bigger budget. So it's, um, it's not, uh, some people could say it's limiting, but it also puts, you have to have very good focus. You have to choose something very clever because you have so small budget. Or at least I have not met documentaries which have huge music budgets. 
just welcome with those budgets. <laughs>